In this video we're going to take a look at how to onboard the Cisco wireless phone using Workspace ONE. So first thing we do is we go ahead and tap this six times and once we've done that it'll go ahead and unlock the device and now you can see that it's ready to scan a QR code as an administrator they have sent me this QR code I'll go ahead and just scan that okay and now that I have scanned the QR code I now see this information which basically it's saying that the device belongs to your organization so now I click next and it'll go ahead and onboard my device okay then I click accept and continue click next accept the Google terms as you can see it's being onboarded onto Workspace ONE now I will enter my group ID I've now entered my group ID and then I have a username password and enrollment is in progress and now we are in the device here and it is continuing to perform some final configuration steps and there we have it the device is now onboarded when you are explicitly blocking all applications you will have to grant access to the phone application on the actual device so this would be the Cisco phone app and all of its supporting functions so what we do is we basically go into app groups and we create an app group and we'll have to add the application name com.cisco.phone and so if we look at our wireless deployment guide you can see in here we list all of the actual applications that need to be allowed so com.cisco.phone is the first one but there are some other supporting ones such as application URLs diagnostics etc and so we would basically permit all of these explicitly in this application group and basically you can cut and paste everything from the deployment guide into here which is what I've done and then we would go ahead and click next then we would make sure this is managed by our organization and then the next thing we need to do is create a profile the profile will link the application group to the device so here I've already created one and for this profile we will assign the application control and this will allow it to permit the Cisco phone app on the device and then we will link it to our smart group which is our organization and then we will save and publish and then if I go to my devices I will click on the list view and just validate on my devices that the profile has been successfully deployed and then when I go and look at the apps we can now see that the Cisco phone app and supporting files are also there now that the policy has been pushed down we can see all of the apps have now populated so there are some additional applications above and beyond just basic calling such as battery life, the emergency settings, push to talk, so on and so forth. And these are built in but they can also be enrolled using Google Play to ensure that they are updated. So this is the Google Play Store and my managed apps and I have basically searched on the Google Play for these apps you can see they're in solid blue and so 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to assign all of these to the workspace one and I'll do that by clicking public and what I'll do is basically select them and go ahead and make sure that they're added. So I save and assign and then what I would do is select the delivery method as auto, give it a name and then choose the correct assignment group and then I would create that. But before I save the most important thing I need to consider is customizing the parameters. So for example setting it to enable. So under the application configuration here I would select send configuration and then I would enable it right because by default it may be disabled so I want to make sure that like the battery monitoring and other important functions such as emergency or push to talk that those are enabled and so it is here that I would add that and then I would go ahead and publish it and then I would go ahead and set this parameter to enable for all the other functions that I want enabled such as again emergency push to talk etc now we will take a look at how to upgrade the Cisco wireless 800 series so first thing is we go to support.cisco.com and navigate to the download section and then we would find the latest firmware available so I've selected the 840 we could have, of course also have selected the 860 so as you can see there are two images one ends with a SHA-512 and the other one ends in a .zip in most cases we want the one with the 512 because that one we're gonna upload directly into CUCM the second one is only used if you have say a TFTP load server typically once we've downloaded the image we would then put it onto an FTP or an SFTP server and then we would log in to the CUCM Unified Operating System Administration and then we can basically download that image from the FTP or the SFTP server so here I would go to software upgrades and I would do an install upgrade and then I would go ahead and specify the location of the image and so here I would basically select remote file system I would specify the FTP or the SFTP directory I would put the server name in the username and password and then click next I then would select the appropriate option in our case it's the 840 and then after selecting that I would click next from here the CUCM will download the image from the FTP or SFTP server and then it will validate it after a few moments the firmware install will complete and then at that point we have to restart the TFTP service so we will navigate to unified serviceability and from there we will select our node and restart the TFTP service from here we will navigate to the main administration page and then we will go to device defaults so we go to device device settings device defaults and then we will scroll down to the Cisco 840 and then here you can see that we have the firmware image that we just installed once we click apply configuration to the phone it will automatically install the firmware and so you can see my 840 is currently registered to CUCM and here if I go to apply configuration that will trigger the phone to download the firmware so I click apply config then I click OK and then after a few short moments you'll see that the status will change to upgrading 
And so we can see the active load ID is 1.8 firmware. It's currently downloading 1.9 to its inactive partition and then it will eventually upgrade once it's finished downloading. So here on our phone there is a handy app that I can use to just check to see if what the status is. And you can actually see that this says system update downloading. I could also force it to check for an update by clicking that button but again as you can see it's downloading so no action is required upon my part and you can see the current version as well as the version that it is upgrading to. So let's give this a few moments to upgrade. And if you swipe down, you can actually see that there is a download manager that shows a progress indicator as well. We're going to look at the barcode scanner. So these are all the built-in apps from Cisco on the device and I'm just going to click the barcode and you can see that we have some options that we can choose from. I'm just going to keep the default and what I'm going to do is just scan a barcode. So here I have the barcode for a book and this device that I'm holding has a built-in barcode scanner and I'm just going to push the button with my thumb on the left and just aim it at this and you can see that it is now scanned it and it has entered this very long number here into the actual app.